Jesuit brother Guy Kunzelmanu, the curator of media rights for the Vatican Observatory, recently sat down with National Jesuit News to talk to us about his vocation story. I'm from Detroit originally. I uh, went to U of D High, which is where I met the Jesuits, and thought immediately about entering the Jesuits out of high school, which people did back in those days. But I wasn't sure. I decided to go to Boston College, which to my mind was hedging my bets. And while at Boston College, I was going to be a history major, um, I wasn't happy. I didn't really like the atmosphere there. This was the 70s and the world was weird and a lot of drinking going along and a lot of the guys in the dorms had all sorts of problems because it was a crazy time. And they would all come and pour out their souls to me and I'm thinking, why are you telling me these things? You know, you're the guy who got drunk last night. Life is tough when you're stupid. So to get away from the guys, I thought I'd join the Jesuit. And a Jesuit at BC said to me, have you prayed about this, son? I mean, pray, you know, I'm 18 years old, who prays? But I guess it comes with the territory. When uh, I went to my room and, you know, following the guy's advice, I'm sitting on the floor looking at the ceiling, waiting for some voice in the sky saying I should be a Jesuit. Like, you know, God, you're desperate, they're looking for priests. Mm, nothing happened. Which I thought was kind of odd. And while nothing happened, this little voice in the back of my head goes, you know, what does a priest actually do for a living? And well, he deals with, with people, deals with people with problems, just like the guys I'm trying to get away from. Oh, that would be a really bad job for me to take. And at that point, I realized either there's no God, at which point it would be dumb to be a Jesuit priest, or God had just told me it would be dumb for me to be a Jesuit priest. Either way, that was obvious. So, okay, then what should I do? I was a nerd. I'd always been a nerd. Why not go to nerd school? My best friend from high school had gone to MIT, and they had uh, weekend movies and pinball machines and the world's biggest collection of science fiction. So I said, I'm going to transfer there. Well, I had to choose a department to transfer into. I'm not going to be an engineer. I wasn't smart enough for that. And I'm not going to be a physics major. I'm certainly not smart enough for that. But Earth and planetary science. Planets. That must be astronomy. I checked off that. What I didn't know was, first of all, that was the easiest department to transfer into, which is how I got in. And secondly, that was the geology department. If I had known that I was signing up to study rocks, what could be more boring than rocks? And then I found out there are rocks that fall from outer space. They're called meteorites. And you could actually hold a piece of space in... I was sold. And by that crazy string of accidents, I became a scientist. But not a Jesuit. That was clear that wasn't going to happen. So I'm 30 years old at this point and wondering what I'm doing with my life. And why am I wasting my time doing astronomy when people are starving in the world? You know, what ultimately a self-indulgent way to live. Astronomy is useless. So I quit astronomy and I joined the Peace Corps. Um, I said I'd go anywhere they asked me to do. Go. Do anything they asked me to do. Because they knew what they needed. Within two months I was at the University of Nairobi teaching astronomy. And then I'd go up country where people really were hungry and where there was a lot of poverty and a lot of poor people living in, in very, very tough conditions. And I'd set up a little telescope and everybody in the village would come out and look at the moon and go, wow, and look at Jupiter and go, oh, and basically react the same way that people back in Michigan reacted. And it hit me, of course, well, of course they're going to react that way. That's, that's how a human reacts when you see space. Astronomy is one of the things that makes us human beings more than just well-fed cows. You know, I had a very clever cat, but my cat never wanted to look through the telescope. That's why you do astronomy. That's why astronomy is important. It's one of the things that makes us human. And giving these people astronomy made sure that they were incorporated into the great adventure of the 20th century, going to the moon, understanding how the universe worked. So I was inspired to teach astronomy, went back to America, taught at a little school in Pennsylvania, which I loved, absolutely loved. This teaching was really what I was 
made to do. At the same time, the girl I'd been dating and I broke up. It you know, was not meant to be, and just as well, and we're happy that way, but I'm pushing 40. And now what am I gonna do with my life? And I made a mathematical calculation to go along with my two degrees from MIT and my degree and my PhD in astronomy. I said, you know, if I met the perfect girl tomorrow, I'd be 40 before we started a family. Those kids would be teenagers when I was, what, 40 plus 15, 65. That's way too old to be raising teenagers. What's plan B? I could be a Jesuit. I could be a Jesuit brother. And where did this brother thing come from? I had never thought about being a brother before. But there was this overwhelming urge, be a Jesuit brother. And I would ask my friends, and they go, well, yeah. And I asked my dad, and he said, I could have told you that 20 years ago. Of course he did. So I tried it out. And it was the right place for me. And I discovered that it wasn't plan B, it was plan A. And two years into the Jesuits, realizing this is where I belonged, I also realized that 40 plus 15 is 55, not 65. But by then, I'd realized this is where I belonged. <laughs>